everybody, it's Tim Pepper with your Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tang. And I want to welcome you back to another Quick Tie sponsored by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Today we are going to be taking you through the Beadhead Evil Weevil. Classic fly, really good nymph. Um, we're going to get to that in just a second. Um, what I want to, to tell you guys, I'm tying out of my Season 5, Episode 13 kit here. If you do not already have one of these awesome Season 5 kits, you can still head on over to our website and grab one today at www.flyfishingboarover.com backslash TNLS5. Don't forget, if you are tuning into this quick tie today, like and subscribe to this video. It helps us out a ton. As well as if you hit that little uh, bell icon, it'll let you know every time that we have a new video coming out for you as well. Without further ado, let's head on over to the vise and let's get started. So you can see this guy here, the evil weevil, great little bug. So you can see a couple things I want you to note to keep in mind as we're moving into this pattern is we do have a pretty plump thorax area. Um, so this fly kind of gets tied in two parts. We'll start with the back end and then we'll work up and uh, try to build a pretty big plump uh, thorax at the top. Okay, let's head on over, get this hook in our vise. So we are tying this on a uh, number 14, size 14 scud hook. So it's kind of a funny shaped hook. I want you to tip that eye down a smidge just as we start because we're going to be tying in these, these tail uh, feather fibers right off the start. And it's going to be easier if we have a little deeper access into um, the bend of the hook because most of this hook does have a bend to it as it is. So let's bring a few thread wraps down. We're going to go ahead and grab our tail material right away, which we are tying is out of pheasant tail. Okay, so grab yourself maybe, I don't know, three, four fibers trying to keep the tips aligned. I like to not overdo this tail with a ton, um, with a ton of fibers on it. It can, it can get really bulky looking in a hurry. So I would say kind of stick to that four or five max. I'm just gonna try to get one separated here, off of here, and then, um, yeah, we'll tie this in. We wanna think about a tail that's gonna stick off roughly half of the overall sh hook shank in length out the back, which obviously is a little tougher um, to tell when this thing is all curved like it is. So you're just gonna have to judge a little bit. So if I'm thinking half, I want it to sit, I'm gonna finish tying part way down the bend. So I'm gonna have it sit off roughly somewhere in there because it is gonna curl down over that edge. So then I'm gonna switch hands. I'm gonna tie this in right where my thread was. And then I'm just gonna be lifting up on the tail fibers as I secure it back down the fly. I wanna turn it just down the bend it's just gonna kind of lay in there like that. It's gonna get a hide in my vise so you can't see it super well, but that is where we're gonna leave it. Now I'm gonna come up here, trim out this tail, butts, and then I'm gonna go and grab my next material, which is gonna be some brassy size gold ultra wire. Now this is gonna get tied in. I'm gonna bring my thread back up. I'm gonna tie it in up here by the bead and then work it back down the fly. This is gonna be the rib for the bottom portion of the fly. So I'm gonna bring that right back to where I left my tail. That can just kind of hang out on its own over here. If you've got a clip of some kind, you can just, material clip, just clip it in there. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna do, this is gonna be the back material that we're gonna use, is gonna be a wide piece of flashaboo, okay? So this one, when we tie it in, it is pretty important that this stays up on top of the hook. We don't want this to go down to either of the sides. So I'm gonna bring my thread back forward again. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep it a little bit on my side of the hook as I tie it in and let my thread wraps pull it up on top of the hook. And then I can lift up on it and just make sure I keep it nice and centered as I work it all the way back down to where I left my wire. Right there. Just gonna make sure I got that all covered up, right up to the bead. Then I'm gonna come back down here. We're gonna start getting some of our dubbing material on this hook shank. Now I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna tip this back up a little bit. Now I don't need as much access down into the bottom portion of the fly. I'm gonna head on over to my dubbing. So we've got this nice olive colored dubbing. Uh, color variations change on this a little bit. Sometimes you can even switch up the color, do a, uh, maybe a more olive brown in the back end and then go to a green, but we're gonna stick with this nice green the whole way up uh, as a more classic pattern. I'm just gonna be making a small dubbing noodle. So I'm just taking a little pinch of dubbing. Okay, I'm gonna lift up on my thread. And as always, when we make these, I'm spinning my fingers in the same direction to create this dubbing noodle. I'm gonna make it a couple inches long. Doesn't need to be a ton because this back portion isn't quite as bulky um, as the thorax, but also we're gonna be wrapping wire over this. So we are gonna compress this down so we get away with a little bit of bulk in the back end. 
So I want that dubbing to start right where I left that flashaboo. And I'm just gonna start wrapping, kind of touching wraps, making sure I'm building a bit of that taper so it's a little bit bigger as we move forward. And I'm gonna bring this right up, leaving about a third of the hook shank to build my thorax out of. So I'm leaving a little bit of space there. That's gonna be where our thorax is built. So now that I'm here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that flash. I'm gonna lift it up, make sure it's nice and flat, right on top of the hook shank. So when I turn it to you, you can see nice and flat right up on top. And I wanna secure it right where I left off with my dubbing. I wanna make sure it's secured right on top of the hook shank. We need it to be right on top because that's kind of where we're doing all of our work is going to be right there. And that's going to be basically almost like a scud back idea, having it right there. So now that I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and grab my wire and I'm going to do this nice open Palmer wraps up over top of that flash. I should be able to get three or four wraps moving forward, I'm trying to keep them as even as possible. This doesn't look super awesome until you look at look at it from the top and then you can see how that nice segmentation is created. In the body, which I'll show you here in a moment. I wanna make sure I tie off that wire really good. Go ahead and grab your buddy's scissors. Don't use your good ones for clipping out wire. Now if I turn that to you, you can see on the top there how it's created that nice segmentation. It's so shiny with the lights on it, but you can see it there, it looks really good. So I'm not done with that flash, so don't cut it out yet. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna bring it forward, tighten this up just a smidge. I'm gonna fold this back and I'm gonna take a few thread wraps back over top of it. I'm still gonna be using this from this tie-in point at the thorax, but I need it to stay back down the fly for now. So go ahead, if you can, get it in that material clip again so it's out of your way. Now, we are tying in two biots, okay? So we got these brown biots we're gonna tie in, one on each side. This is gonna represent more the legs coming off the thorax. Normally our biots are representing, you know, tail fibers or even wings, like in a, um, in a Prince nymph or something like that. But this time we're gonna be using these as legs. So you can see the curve that they have. We want it to curve away from the body. So I'm actually placing this right on the side of the hook. And I want this to extend quite a ways back down the fly, about to where, roughly where our tail fibers actually got tied in. It's hard to see from this angle, but when I show you on the other side, you'll see a little better. But roughly get your spot where you want it. You can secure it with just a couple of loose wraps and then you can check on it. So if you see on my side here, I can see where it's extended to. I'm gonna shorten that up just a smidge so I can just give a little pull on this tail. And I'm okay with that there. So I'm gonna take a couple more tighter wraps to secure it. It's gonna flare it slightly, which is okay. Then I'm gonna come do it on the other side of the fly. If you have the ability to rotate your vise, it is very advantageous in helping you kind of see the work you're doing um, and making sure you get everything as level as possible. So I'm gonna tie this one in a little bit long like I did the last one, then I can adjust it. A Couple of loose wraps. And then now the important part is that I make sure that both of them match like so. So if I show it to you there, you can see I got them both pulled so they're even. I'm gonna take a couple of thread wraps forward to secure that a little more, and then I'm gonna trim out the stems of those biots. Biots sometimes like to move around on you, so it's important that you secure that stem down. Okay, we're almost there. Now we're gonna come back up against those biots. We're gonna add some more dubbing. So this is where we're gonna get a nice bulky thorax. So we're gonna make a another uh, dubbing noodle. This one is gonna be a little shorter, but bulkier. So moisten your fingers even if you want to, bulk it up a little bit. We wanna have enough material to build a nice thorax. If we put too much dubbing on, that's fine, we can pull it off. Should be plenty. I want that thread wrap to start right back against the biots, and then moving forward. You see I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm gonna tighten this up and finish this right behind the bead. Okay, now last piece of the puzzle, bringing forward my flash. It's gonna be the top end of our thorax, creating this nice shiny top to it. I'm gonna bring that over, keeping it right up on top of the hook shank again, secure it with a thread wrap. Then I wanna lift it up, get a thread wrap in behind the bead, and maybe one more there, and again below. 
and then we can trim that out as, clo as close as we can. I'm gonna tip this up so I can whip finish this a little easier. And then we're gonna whip finish this fly right in this position. Go ahead, grab your whip finish mature or your whip finish tool, two or three turn whip finish. I'm gonna touch it with just a little bit of resin. Trim out my thread. I'm gonna use some UV, uh, sorry, some UV solar res bone dry. Just a small touch. I'm not creating a bubble on this fly or anything like that over the thorax, just enough to touch those thread wraps and make sure they're not gonna go anywhere. I'll cure that real quick. And I'll give you a look at the finished product. This is our Evo Weevil. There you go, guys, you can see it. Those bites create some nice legs. Um, color, that flashback, all the wire, all comes together making a really good looking bug. I promise you again, this is one of those ones you're not gonna wanna hit the water without. Again guys, my name's Tim Hepworth, you're with Fly Fishing Boarder Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Time. We wanna thank you for joining us for another quick tie, sponsored by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and uh, we'll be back next week with another couple patterns.